You're listening to Thursday Night AMP on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Hello, Lance. Hi, uh, yeah. Hey, it's How good you evening. Doing, Lance? Uh, I'm doing great. Just leaving the gym. Awesome. <laughs> well, I'm Stevie J, and you already know Jordan Garber, of course, because he set up the interview. But thanks for joining us on the show tonight. Oh, no problem, man. Thanks for having me. Well, it's an honor for us, really, because you're... That there are so we just talked about this off the air before you joined us, but there are so many generations of your family that have been in professional wrestling that we're we're honored just to have you on as part of that great family lineage. Oh man, just love carrying on the family genes, man. <laughs> Is there anybody in the Ottawa family who hasn't wrestled? I guess that would be my first question. Oh uh, well, yeah, we got we got quite a few people that don't uh, wrestle. We got a lot of people that also play football in college. Uh, I also have a cousin that's on, uh, he's actually on American Idol this, uh, this season. Right, so, yeah, we, we just saw that in the news the other day that, uh, that there was a big family gathering out there for the, uh, I guess the tryout or whatever it was that, that get, getting on the show. I mean, it's not an automatic. It's like WWE. You got to try out for it just like anything else. You know, yeah, he's so, out there. He, uh, he did the San Francisco audition and hopefully he moves on, but we're there supporting him. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about how you first broke into professional wrestling. I mean, you've got your father, Samu, and your grandfather, Afa. So who, who did most of your training when you were first thinking about breaking into professional wrestling? Was it your dad or your grandfather? Oh, uh, my dad. It was all my dad. Uh, I had, I just picked my grandfather's brain, and he helped me out a lot also. Uh, when I first broke in, uh, my dad owned the school where I'm at now, which was previously owned by my grandfather, but my grandfather ended up moving to Florida and opened in the school in Florida. So when I broke in, my gra- my dad's the one that had the school. So he's the one that started training me. And that's World Extreme Wrestling, right? Yes. I, uh, the one up here is World Extreme Wrestling C4. It's uh, kind of like just an explosion, new era. Mm-hmm. So from there, you got uh, you got your training and got started. Uh, what was your first match? When did you actually first get in the ring and wrestle in front of a crowd? Uh, my first one, Paul. Uh, uh, I did a few illegally uh, when I was like eight <laughs> years old, <laughs> but uh, that, that was just running in with my dad. But my actual first match officially uh, was March of 2010. Uh, All right. It was a, it was in West Virginia. I had to wait till I was 18 to wrestle, so I'm all, I'll be 23 next month. Uh, I've been doing it. I've been training for over almost six, five and a half years. All right. Well, you've got plenty of experience then from just starting at 18 to now to already have five years in the ring. And uh, how are you feeling so far? Is it, Are the bumps starting to wear on you, or are you holding up pretty well? No, nah, I'm holding up real well. I feel real good uh, in and out of the ring. Uh, I just love being in the ring mainly. Uh, I just basically, I live, I went right from training in the ring, right to the gym, working out, ready to go home and rest and do it all over again tomorrow. Hmm. Now, uh, just before you came on the air, we were talking about the fact that you were featured on SmackDown recently, and uh, you didn't end up being the victor that night, but at least you got to work with Victor and Connor, of course. So <laughs> talk to us a little bit about that experience. Uh, that experience was cool. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, we had uh, tryout matches beforehand, and they got to pick two guys to uh, work the Ascension, and they chose me, and the other guy was Rhett Titus. Uh and they just said, hey, would you, are y'all okay doing a squash match? And we said, sure. And from there, we just got through the match. And they thanked me for taking a hell of a bump for their finish. <laughs> yeah, you made it look really good. I, I was impressed by it. And, in fact, I'm probably more impressed by seeing you on television than uh, the Ascension because they haven't really been using them that well so far, at least in my opinion. They It kind of made them a little silly as compared to what they were like on NXT. But hopefully they yeah. sort that out and, and get it figured out. But I got to ask, did you know Red at all before you went in there and worked the tag with him? Because we see him all the time on Ring of Honor, but I don't know if you'd had a chance to work with him before. No, I never worked with him. I knew Rhett probably for almost eight years. Uh, he used to come down and wrestle for my grandfather a bunch of times, and also he wrestled uh, a few times with my uncle, Alpha Jr. And, yeah, we were just talking about how he used to come down and wrestle and how I was a little kid just giving people the rock bottom, the people's elbow, just as a, as a little kid doing it. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, uh, I want to get Jordan in here to ask a few questions as well. He was the one who lined this up. So with all due respect, I'll turn it over to Jordan, and I'll jump back in when he's ready. So, Jordan, the floor is yours. Sounds good. 
Awesome stuff. Lance, obviously you're in a, a great bloodline of uh, wrestling uh, with your family. Did you ever feel any pressure, like, training and ever worrying that you weren't going to, like, make it as a wrestler and everything and how they would feel about that? No, I never felt any pressure. It just, it drove me to go harder. If I made a mistake in training, I knew I had to fix it because my dad was always right there on me uh, to make sure I would perfect it. But there was no pressure. Like, there's no pressure now whether I make it or not because either way, I'm still going to do what I love to do, and that's wrestle and entertain the fans. For sure. Um, and uh, having your first few matches and obviously still wrestling now, do you ever, like, look back and think about how su- successful you are and how successful you can even be in the future because of all these tools you have, by like, all the connections you already have just in your family? Um, how does that feel for you? Well, I actually just watched my very first match probably, like, three weeks ago, and I watched, like, how much I progressed. And if I progressed so much in that little bit of time, uh, I feel like my future is very bright, and I just keep progressing more and more, and then I see myself as a top star hopefully one day. So pretty much sidetracking to that, kind of going all the way to uh, the WWE thing um, with your um, enhancement talent role against the Ascension last Friday night on SmackDown. Just tell us how you got the call to be the... I know how wrestlers get the call and everything. I've interviewed many that have been involved with that. But how did it personally work out for you, and how did you feel when you got the call that you were going to be an enhancement talent against the Ascension last Friday? Um, I was happy. It wasn't the first time I was there. Uh, I was actually on SmackDown probably like, I want to say in November. Uh, it was Adam Rose versus Kane, and the Rosebud got attacked by Kane, and I took a choke slam by him. Uh, that was my first time on SmackDown, and then the extension. So I was kind of, like, used to it already. I was – it felt – to me, it felt like that's where I'm supposed to be. I felt at home. And when they gave me the call for the second time, it, I felt honored, and they must have liked me. So, obviously, they see something in me. Awesome. Back to you, Stevie. All right. Well, Lance, uh, my next question for you is NXT is the hot property in WWE right now. A lot of people actually prefer it to Raw or SmackDown because it's the next generation of talent. It's the guys that we've seen on the independents like El Generico, who is now Sami Zayn, and Fergal Devitt, who is now Finn Bilor. So have you thought about going to NXT yourself? Have you gotten any feelers from WWE to come to NXT? Uh, I haven't heard anything yet. I'm just hoping uh, hopefully one day I get a contract to go on down uh sign me some developmental deal. But right now, it's just kind of like a waiting game. Whenever they're ready for you, they'll give you the call. But I would love to be part to of that. Watch. What was that? I'm oh, talking? yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I, uh, I jumped in too early. I was. But, but you were I, saying, I, yeah, you'd like to be a part of that roster, and we'd like yeah, you to be a I part would, of that roster. I would love to be a part of that roster. I, wa- I watched the last uh, pay-per-view, and it was great. I, I probably enjoyed it uh, better than most of the WWE pay-per-views. Uh, me watching, like, Kevin Steen work independent scenes, and then also watching there how big of a push he got right away. And that's pretty good also. And just like uh, Prince Devin and Sami Zayn, especially with Sami Zayn getting the title, that's great. And I love how they're starting the feud and they're building like the ROH storyline into NXT with between Kevin Steen and Sami Zayn. So I was just like one day, I would love to be part of that. Definitely love to see you as part of NXT. And I, I got to pick your brain a little bit on this one because you said you're watching it, so obviously you know the product pretty well. And right now my feeling is that with all the independent stars that they've brought in, the guys that we've seen, Ring of Honor, New Japan, all over the world, everywhere that they've worked, it's almost – and maybe I'm wrong about this, but right now Raw just seems so stale and NXT seems so fresh. I mean, do you get that impression yourself when you're watching NXT or do you think that it's like just an unfair comparison right now? Uh, I'm not too sure. I'll, obviously, I would love to work the NXT, but every one step is always the rise to the next one, which will be Raw, the main roster, whether it's hot or not. Because every, every part has its downfall, and right now, Raw may be at its downfall, and hopefully one day it'll pick back up, and then everybody will be uh, striving to get into there. I think that's fair. I mean, after all, it is... The bigger audience, the bigger crowds, the bigger television exposure, you know, NXT. And you, bigger oh, paychecks. Go ahead. 
Oh, and bigger paychecks, of course, because not everybody subscribes to the WWE Network. We always have to keep that in mind. When you're a hardcore wrestling fan, it seems like everybody's watching it, but in in reality, it's like 400,000 people, and Raw is like 3.5 million people. Yeah, well, here's the thing I was thinking about the network was that, like, I would, I want to get it, but I, I'm the guy that likes to look back at the past, and I like to see the history of what, I, I just like watching old pay-per-views. So I just thought to myself, like, I, I don't want to, and it's it's uh, more expensive here in Canada, it's actually fourteen ninety nine. so I don't want to spend 15 bucks a month, and I'm not getting what I want. I want to get the uh, all the pay-per-views and the history of the company, I want to get that content as well. So it's like, I want to get what I pay for, right? So it's always good to do your research. No. Me personally, I don't. I don't have the network. I actually borrow Fred's account and I use the network with it. Oh, 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 it's a little bit bootleg, eh, Lance? But that's okay because hey, uh, hey, that's I, that's where I think all the subscribers are really are. They're just borrowing people's accounts. I, you're not the first person I know to do that, so take no shame <laughs> in it because I got some good friends that are borrowing other people's accounts so they can watch it as well, which I, I guess that just shows there is an audience out there for WWE. They just got to find it because right now there's a lot of people who are not willing to pay for what they offer. They're, it's kind of an interesting situation. Yep. But let's get back to your career and uh, less about NXT and more about you. I want to know, what do you think, you know, obviously you've worked all over the place, WXW, all the independents along the East Coast and down South, and of course you've been on WWE in an enhancement role, but what's your favorite match that you've had or favorite place that you've worked out of all of those? Well, my favorite match of all time is, it just happened uh, March 1st of 2014, it was for WXWC4 here in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I brought my grandfather out of retirement. I brought him out of retirement, and it was me, my, uh, my two uncles, my dad, and my grandfather all in one ring in a 10-man tag. Wow. So that's, that was probably, that was my favorite match of all time. That's a lot of history in one ring. Does, does that match have a DVD or a video, or is it on YouTube? Is there a way for us to see that match? Oh, it's not on YouTube, I believe. I have, I've seen clips of it. I haven't even seen the whole match yet, but I'm still looking for it. i got to find get a hold of our uh, TV people and find it. Well, what is the TV product, actually? Is it distributed just in Allentown or the greater yeah, Pennsylvania we're area? Or, go ahead. Yeah, we're a local area. We're probably, uh, it's like a 40-mile radius uh, out of Allentown. It's called uh, Service Electric, and then we also in the Poconos area uh, on Blue Ridge Cable. So uh, I'm not exactly sh- too sure how many TVs or how many homes we reach, but it's uh, a lot of people hear about us. Yeah, I mentioned it's probably a lot like ECW in the very early days, where it was just available locally on cable in Philadelphia and the surrounding market in Pennsylvania, and then people got the word of it and it spread from there. Yep, just All right, like Jordan, that. Jordan, back to you. All right, so uh, pretty much you don't, you're not just, uh, you're 22, actually, and you said earlier that you're turning 23 in a month, and most 22 or 23-year-olds just begin training, and they're with one promotion for, like, let's say two or three years, but not in your case, you've already been doing this for five years, and now you're, like Stevie said, you're going across all the promotions in the East Coast. So how do you, like, feel at a young age going through all these experiences, because all every promotion you go to is a different experience, just seeing all these different experiences at a young age, and how do you think that's going to benefit you in the future? Yeah, I think it benefits me. I enjoy traveling. Well, as a kid, I even loved traveling with my father when he was on the road, uh, traveling up and down the East Coast, wrestling for the top promotions out here. Like uh, I wrestled for PWS, uh, Jersey Championship Wrestling, NYWC up in New York. I also wrestled for Maryland Championship Wrestling. Uh, Florida, a bunch of NWAs. Uh, for me being 22 and getting an opportunity like that, I just take advantage of it and I just run and I give my heart out every match I do and hopefully I'll, they bring me back. And so far, every company has brought me back, so everyone must like me. Every day you, um, you wake up and you, you uh, realize that you have to work a wrestling show. What's your favorite part about that? Every morning, I wake up at the work, uh, wrestle a wrestling show, you said? Yeah, when you have to deal with the re- pretty much my main question would be um, in that question is like, what's your favorite part about professional wrestling? It's the traveling and the fans and meeting all the new fans. Uh, since starting wrestling, my social media has gone up. Everyone, 
uh, thanking me for out, for putting on a great show that night or traveling and entertaining their kids or their kids coming up to me saying that I'm their favorite wrestler. That's probably the best part is mainly the fans. Awesome stuff. Stevie, back to you. Lance, uh, do you ever get any, uh, I don't know if the word negativity is the right way, but does anybody ever come at you and say, you got connections in this business that we don't, and you get a leg up on us that we don't get, and it's unfair? Yeah, I get that a lot. I actually get that from a few people. Mainly, they just say that my foot's there, I, I have a contract right away. But to me, I'm working just as hard as they are. If I, if I, if I had a contract, why don't I get the contract as soon as I started wrestling? Is the way I see it. Right, yeah, you don't um, get anywhere without but, working hard. Go ahead. Exactly. So I'm working hard just as hard as them, and it's a dream that I want to achieve just like them. Obviously, my family's in the door, and I have big footsteps to fill, but I just got to train just as hard. And that's that's the picture I want them to see whenever they say that I got to eat. Because I'm, honestly, I really don't because I have my family pushing me to to be the best I can be. Absolutely. So, in the ranks of the WWE Hall of Fame, there are several members of your family in there. Were you able to uh, attend any of the Hall of Fame ceremonies? I've uh, actually been to the, the one my grandfather was in, in Detroit, Michigan, and I also was at the one uh, Yokozuna in Miami, Florida. Well, that's I've awesome. Those. I, I was at the one in Detroit as well. Obviously, I don't have any family connections. I was just sitting in the crowd, but that, that was a heck of an induction. That was one of my favorite ones that night. Yes, my dad got to induct my father, my grandfather, so I was there, third row back. So I enjoyed it, especially the one with Yokozuna in Miami. It was my first time in Miami, and I enjoyed that experience also. <laughs> Hey, who was sitting next to you when you were sitting third row? Did you have, like, Triple H in front of you and, like, John Cena to your side? Who was sitting around you at the time? Uh, honestly, I don't even remember. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, Batista at the time was right next to me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was back when Batista was having his big run in WWE and really getting over yeah. with his... Uh, yeah, I think that that night it was uh, him versus Taker, I believe, That the next night at Mania. That's right. Yeah, that was a heck of a match, too. So, what And then Batista f- also trained at my grandfather's school, so we're all real close and everything. So. Well, that was my next question, actually. was, uh, What do you think of his transition from the wrestling ring to Hollywood? He's kind of following the Rock's footsteps with that one. Yeah, hey, man. You, honestly, I think they go where the money goes. Uh, obviously, acting Hollywood is a lot easier on the body. And once you reach a certain age, your body can always handle so much. And I can think Hollywood was the best choice for him because he's the only wrestler for how long. Mm-hmm. That's right. And he was getting up there even when he started. He was in his late 30s, I think, when he debuted in WWE. So that, that yep. was clock ticking on Batista as it was. But he hung together for a long time. And then, obviously, he's made it very big with Guardians of the Galaxy. And that that was a huge hit for him. So he's going to have yeah, a lot of now- success. Go ahead. Now here he's doing a James Bond movie. That's right. He's playing a villain in the uh, next Bond flick called Spectre. Yep. So continued success to Batista as well. So uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and get some plugs right now because I know there's got to be WXW shows coming up that you'd like to get out there and promote and uh, any other independent dates that you're doing. Go ahead and plug those right now if you'd like. Oh, right now I have a uh, – we actually just passed our – previous WXWC4 show, but our, our next one is uh, February 7th here in Allentown. It's actually me and my uncle off a of junior tagging inside of a lumberjack match. And then I have uh, another match coming up uh, next weekend. It's me, off a of junior, and one of our local students, Havoc, for Pennsylvania uh, Premier Wrestling in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. And we're facing uh, Tommy Dreamer and two of his partners. Uh, also got Maryland Championship Wrestling coming, uh, in February. And yeah, just staying busy. I got another surprise, but I can't reveal anything yet, so. <laughs> well, yeah, don't let any cats out of the bag. We'll let you keep those exactly. secrets until you announce them on Twitter or wherever you're going to announce them, you know, and the WXW ring might be where you announce it. We'll, we'll let you uh, take care of that. <laughs> hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah. Now, we do have a question from our chat room that I'll ask before I toss it back to Jordan. Uh, Nikolai wants to know, how much chance do you get to spend with Roman Reigns when he's out working on WWE tours? Do you get to run into him at all? 
Uh, no, not really. We used to all be close. Obviously, when you're on the road, you're on the road for over, three, over 300 uh, days of the year. So he's a very busy person. I talk to him. I text. I get a hold of him and the Usos. Uh, me and the Usos are pretty close. And actually, me and uh, Roman Reigns just had a talk the night I was on SmackDown. He actually came up to me, talked to me. He was uh, critiquing my match before uh, SmackDown to tell me what should I work on. And he told me that they really like me here, and they chose me for a reason for that place. So other than that, they're busy, so don't want to really bother them. But we know family strong, and we just keep it going. Actually, that's kind of the irony is that he just got back from the incarcerated hernia surgery, so you might have missed him if he had been a couple of weeks later in recovering. You might have not crossed paths at all. When I was down there, I did two house shows with them and they did we did a show in Pittsburgh then we did a show in Richmond Virginia and then smacked out at Norfolk but they were also doing Raw on Monday while they did a house show in Richmond he opened the night in Richmond he jumped on a jet and flew to Raw for an hour later and then they said he got right off the plane right for his entrance I saw that that night I was like how is he going to make the house show and Raw at the same time? But he pulled it off. I got to give he him credit. He pulled it off. I was like, how did he do it? They are like, he got off. He walked into the building. He walked up the steps and his music hit and he went right in the ring. Yeah, he's getting the credit right now. It's one of the hardest working so guys. I was, I was like, I, ho- I hope he enjoyed his time off because now they're working him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's getting the best reactions at the house shows. And according to merchandise right. sales, he's doing really well, too. Yes, he's doing very well for himself. Uh, then again, he was, uh, he never wrestled before. He was a football player. I thought he was going to the NFL. He was making it big in the NFL. And then all of a sudden, my grandfather tells me he got signed. And I was like, oh, good for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the Shield put him on the top. They, they rose up and he rose up along with them. So it all worked out well. Yep. All right, Jordan, back to you to wrap up the interview. Awesome, man. Pretty much to everyone listening, if they don't already know who you are, just tell pretty much most people do that are listening in. But uh, to the people that don't, just tell everyone uh, what you're about and uh, what they expect from you, what you are going to do in the future, pretty much. Well, my name is Lance Onawati. I'm a third-generation Samoan wrestler. I come from the famous Onawati family. Uh, my, gr- my father's Hesh Sugar Samu. My grandfather, my father's Samu. My grandfather's Alpha. Uh, WWE Hall of Famer, and I plan on being on top of the WWE one day, just like the rest of my family, and awesome. carry Thank on the lineage. Thank, Thank you, Lance. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem, man. Thank you for having me. Well, it's All our right, pleasure, Lance. And before you go, hey, real quick, uh, social media plugs so people can follow you, Twitter, MySpace, Instagram, whatever you got. It's all the same. Instagram, Facebook, and my uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. It's all Lance on Hawaii. Last name is A N O A I for people that can't, that really don't know how to spell it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm on all three, so just give me a follow and I'll follow back if you just tell me that you were listening. Awesome. Thank you again, Lance. We really appreciate it and continued success. We hope to be seeing more and more of you on TV in the future. All right. Thank you for having me and enjoy. All right. Take care. All right.